Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're on the Easy Start 2 map, testing out the new airtight blast doors. Uh, we did some testing on it earlier that was actually unrecorded. Basically we tried to use a piston system to extend them, because what we have currently... Let me place it. We have currently, as you can see, they deploy as a three block long bit. But basically that means when you stack them up, opposite facing, you only have a four block gap in your actual doorway. And currently there's no way to expand that. So you can have as wide as you want in one direction, but as far as well, making it square, you would have to use pistons for that. But what we ran into with the piston testing is while the doors will actually seal, the uh, pistons, the piston head rather, creates a problem where you can't get the blocks flush enough to take advantage of that seal. So unfortunately our idea to expand it to a 10x10 10 10 gap door using the piston system and of course using another set of blast doors just on their own covering the piston to make up for that gap, that did not work out because we could not get them flush enough to actually affect that, even though the doors themselves work in such a way that you can. Now the doors, the collision model is exactly where the visible model is, so of course you can run through or get squished. Of course it's creative so I didn't get killed, but otherwise I would be killed in that. But you can run through and shoot through up until the point where it is fully closed. Now, as you can see here, you actually do not need to have doors in the opposite end. So we close that, and we go back and close this one as well. And we'll go close this set as well. So, basically anything that is flush and is considered airtight, you can have on the other end, and those doors will close down and seal it up. So we go over here, and we see we are fully sealed. Uh, this set here I put into the floor so that way we can test out how it handles just moving over it. Of course this area is too small for me to put a wheeled vehicle in, but you get the ideas from walking over it. It's a slight few bumps here and there, so if you're going at high speed in a vehicle, you're probably going to uh, bounce around or just basically get knocked up and possibly fly out of your um, gravity field that way. So you want to definitely slow down, just like you're actually going across a railroad crossing in the real world. But you'd have a nice, easy transport, right there, or an easy pass over, rather. Now, here I've got it set up so that we can test, well, basically one of the ways you would use it. It's not really a test, it's just showing you how to use it. So we have this uh, room sealed off, of course. And we will go back over here and open this up. Since both of those rooms are sealed, we do have our pressurization here. So one of the features that you'd want to use this for beyond just actual hangar doors as the developers intended it is, let's say you want to compartmentalize your ship with these doors, which I'd strongly recommend at this point. They definitely seem to be best for that. Uh, and you take damage into your shipper station. So now you've got a whole bridge and you're venting O2, so of course you're going to come in and you're going to turn this on. Oh, go ahead. Anyways, so we'll turn that on to seal off the compartment. Then what you'll want to do is basically just lock those doors in place, which actually I did not bother to check, so let me take a quick look to see if they have power on off option. Yeah. So basically you would just power them off and that would lock the doors in place. So if you wanted to do that, we would go and add the group for it. I have to move this, this one here. Toggle block on off. And that turns it off so that no matter how much we click it, it will not actually open up. Well, that didn't look right. Okay, I mapped the wrong group. My apologies. But uh, basically, you get the idea is that it would block it so that nobody could open it by accident. And that would seal up your gaps there. So we'll put that there for now. So 
course there's just a few other ideas. You can use a single block and this is what you'll probably end up using a lot more for your compartmentalizing is just a single block which you only need to have a total of three blocks clearance for. Since you only need the one for the actual base piece and then of course the two for the gap. Now you cannot obviously do less than three because of the way it deploys. It deploys as if it takes up all three spaces. Now onward let me check our list real quick. Alright, so next on our list, we will go ahead and check our timer block setup. So we'll come back out here, and we will tell all the doors to open. So what we have here is, and we actually only need two timer blocks for this size, but we have our timer blocks here, which you can put them anywhere, that you can actually bury them into the hole of the ship, which is a good idea. And we've set these up with, uh, since we only need two, is the uh, kickoff block and the loop back. So our kickoff block, which we can reduce that timer down to one, really, we have this one set up to use each door grouping. And what that does is it will automatically close them. It's set just to close. So say we go to a group, right click on it, we hit close. So we do that for all of our door sections. And then at last, we put the loop back block on here. Now the purpose of this setup is so that we can have a automatic shut off, or not shut off, but an automatic closing that runs every five minutes for these blast doors. Now you can do this for anything of course, but we're using these blast doors as our example. So every five minutes this is going to basically close all the doors, and if none of the doors are open of course it's not really going to do anything but just restart its own timer. It cycles through them regardless. And that's where our loopback comes in. This is where we set the time that we want it to run. And its only action is to trigger the kickoff block. So basically what that means is we would start this one here. As you can see, our doors are closing. And that starts the timer on the loopback block. and those two will just continue to cycle that way because of the way they're set up. It even shows you the uh, time on the actual loopback block, which you can name those anything you want, of course. So we'll go ahead and reopen them all for now as we go into the next part of the testing, and then we'll come back to it after the next test and see how it actually sets off, which, of course, I should have went the other way because we need the fighter craft for this one. Alright, next set of tests, rather. I'm going to go ahead and pull him out here. And we will park you right about there, should do. Okay. So, here we're covering the uh, concept of hiding weapons and engines and pretty much anything you need here. Uh, obviously, we set the door there, so you can set that up inside your console inside the ship. That opens up, and what we have here is a nice missile bank here. Of course, you can put turrets or anything else you want behind there. And we will go ahead and fire those. I'd rather have trouble finding them in this system here. For some unexplainable reason. So, we're going to shoot ourselves, of course, and go flying way the hell off. And then we'll come back down, and I'll slave those to one of the buttons so we can actually visibly see it as it fires. So let's take a quick look here. You'll notice that there is some minor damage from where it impacted me on the uh, armor here, so of course we're going to need to go ahead and tool out and repair all 
this. Not really concerned with that, just more so with the actual blast door blocks, because our next test is going to be testing the damage threshold on these blocks. Another option you can do to expand upon this further is you could recess these further back so they're not flush up against the block. Just worry about the height, of course. Make sure they have a clear line of view. And set up a sensor that would detect object. And that way when the door starts to raise, you can have that sensor disable the automatic firing. And when the door lowers, you can have it begin firing. Just one of many options, of course, you can do with that. it takes to punch through. Line it up so that we have one rocket on each here. Alright, try it over here. And this time we'll actually turn one of the guns off. there to punch through. Let's go to the other side where I have a wall of the original blast door blocks. through with just four hits, which is quite interesting. So, damage is a bit inconclusive other than it certainly seems to be less than the uh, standard blast door blocks. I would say probably go with the original 10, that would probably be the best bet. Right. Anyways, bad habit of wanting to repair any damage I see. So as you can see here, our timer block is still counting. All the doors we left open are closed here. So we open that up. And you see that the next set of doors are also closed. So basically what you're going to find is that with that timer is set up, all your doors will continuously be closed on a regular interval. Five minutes is usually a good interval because that gives you plenty of time to move anything you're trying to fly in in without, you know, ended up wrecking your ship. And you can even go a bit more further with it and set up a light system on those exterior doors, those large doors that we blew through, so that whenever it is counting down, or whenever it's within a certain time frame, rather, you can even set it up to change color of the light, give you an idea of how long until the automatic cycle. Because you will still have a problem where if we're opening the door and then we get in we fly through, we just happen to be flying through the time where the timer block is going to go off and all of a sudden 